Hey everybody, Max coming here. It's a little cute podcast. It's not too long. Uh, so you know, I went to the uh, Carmen Bar last night, do my first first stand up set in America since I've been back. You know, uh, it was fucking awful. Probably the most, probably the biggest bomb I've ever bombed in my in my bombing life. You know, I bombed pretty hard. You know, I performed in in front of uh, you know a bunch of Japanese people that didn't speak English. You know, and they laughed more actually than. Uh, than uh, this audience, you know, the problem was that this open mic, it was, it was music and comedy too, you know, and uh, spoken word poetry, if anyone wanted to do that, but uh, no one was doing that, but it was mostly just musicians, right, and a couple comedians, so the problem really was like, uh, you know, when the musicians are up there, the whole audience, you don't have to actively listen to that, you know, everyone's like playing pool and getting drunk and having their conversations, and the music is in the background, right, they can still enjoy it, you know, then after the song's over, everyone just claps or whatever, you know. But with comedy, you gotta you gotta listen. You gotta you gotta listen closely. You you can't just have a conversation with the bartender while you're drinking, you know, shooting pool while someone's telling jokes in the corner. You gotta you gotta pay attention, you know. So uh, basically, by the time I went up there, no one no one was even fucking listening. You know, there was probably about twenty people in that place, but there was only like uh, maybe maybe five or so people at this table, and they were all old people, and uh, they were they were listening for a little bit, you know. They laughed at they laughed at one of my jokes. Uh, I make this joke about about Japanese people, their intonation changing the meaning of their questions. And I told that joke, and then like I I gave the one one thousand two one thousand to wait for the laughter, and it didn't really come, you know. So then I started the next joke, and right as I started the next joke, the the table just started busting up laughing, you know. That was pretty good, but uh, it took them a little long. It took them a little long to get it, you know. But they were older, you know. Older people's brains uh, go a little slower, so that that was a good experience for me. I got to learn to. If my audience is old people, maybe I'll give them a give them a three one thousand to start laughing, you know. Uh, but yeah, basically, I just did my whole set, and I I did a set that I know works that works pretty well, and uh, basically I just paused after every punchline, and no one laughed, and I just I just looking around the room, and was like, oh well, no one's listening, no one's even listening to me right now. What am I doing right now? Uh, I guess this is just practice, you know, just practice, just practice makes perfect, ha 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 ha. You know, I, I don't know. I mean. It, they probably shouldn't do the mixed, the comedy and music. That's kind of a, that's a bad idea. You know, I don't know who organizes that event, but I don't think I'll ever go to that open mic again because, uh, you know, the whole point, the whole reason to go to open mics is to test your jokes, you know, and, and, um, if no one's listening, then you can't tell if they're funny or not, you know, cause, cause I know all of these jokes are funny cause I've tested them before, but, uh, you know, I told them last night and no one was laughing. So if that was the first time saying them, you know, I would, I would figure, well, all these jokes must be terrible. You know, no one, no one even made any noise at all. No one even acknowledged them. So these jokes must be terrible. But I know, I already know they're good. So anyway, uh, that's, uh, you know, that's a stand-up comedian drama. You know, they had, they had a couple other comedians. There was, there's three total comedians and like seven musicians, right? And the first guys that went up there, they were, uh, they were like doing manzai, which is like two man, two man comedy, you know? And, uh, one of the guys, he was on acid and that was, that was kind of the only joke. That was their whole joke is he's like, I'm on acid. I'm on acid, everybody. This is crazy. Woo! And, uh, you know, they went like eight minutes, and uh, they, did, they didn't tell one joke. I don't really understand what they're trying to do, if they were just trying to, you know, riff, or... I have no idea, but uh, it was fucking terrible. You know, it was it was goddamn awful. And, uh, you know, they seemed like good guys, though. I think maybe they could have a good set if they actually wrote something down, if they actually wrote down a joke, instead of just like... Uh, Hey, let's do acid and go up on stage for eight minutes and tr- and try to be funny. Uh, but yeah, maybe uh, I don't know. We'll see. And then one guy, another another Asian dude, went up there and uh, he didn't. He had one joke. He went up there for about ten minutes too. He only had one joke, and the rest was just kind of him talking. I don't really understand these people that don't actually write jokes with punchlines and just they want to do stand up comedy, but they don't have any punchlines. It's like, well, what are you what are you doing? You can't just go up there and start talking. Like he 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 would start ta- he was talking to me he was like I like this food you know it's pretty good food uh, yeah anyway only only Filipino can make it so and then he move on to a next topic you know it's like well that there was no punchline there I don't know what are you doing man what are you and you know people started heckling him and then he started heckling them back so he was just like fighting with the guys that were playing pool you know he's like fuck you you motherfucker so that was kind of interesting you know you just watch the two guys fight it's like oh that was that was pretty good stand up man you're 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 just fighting with the audience. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe prepare a little bit more next time. You know. I mean, I uh, I don't I don't blame the guy. I kind of felt bad for him. You know. And he probably he probably wanted to make people laugh, but the audience just wasn't having it. They were you know no one was even listening anyway really. 
Uh, yeah, so that was that was terrible. But you know, on Wednesday they have a uh, they have an actual only comedy stand up. So I think I'm gonna go again on Wednesday and uh, see what happens. You know, hopefully it'll be a little little better audience. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, well, anyway, it's New Year's Eve right now. You know, I don't know if you guys got plans tonight. I'd be just like, dude, fucking fucking New Year's Eve party, bro. Dude, fucking party, dude. Let's get fucking drunk, dude. Cocaine, ecstasy, MDMA. You know? I mean, I don't do that stuff. You know that drugs are bad for you. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't have any plans tonight, you know, uh, there's really nothing going, my hometown is, uh, really fucking boring, there's, uh, there's nothing around here, you know, yeah, I mean, you gotta drive, like, 30 miles, 30 minutes, you know, to, to, to civilization or whatever, you know, kind of live, not, not in countryside, but just, like, suburbs, you know, there's really nothing, you can go to a restaurant or something for New Year's Eve, you know, they got, they got these expensive hotels around here that have restaurants, but that's not, you know, you can't meet any hot mamas at the restaurants. Be like, you know, you just yell over at the other table. It's like, hey, hey, baby, what'd you order? I got the shrimp and steak, the surf and turf. What'd you get? Mama, can I, can I buy you a margarita? Let me, oh, your husband has been in the bathroom? Well, he don't gots to know about it. Why don't you come over here and take a bite of my mashed potatoes? You want some of my garlic bread? I got extra because I ordered for two people, but I came here alone. I'm so lonely. Someone hold me. What this bill is one hundred eighty dollars, motherfucker! I'm getting out of here. You know? That kind of—that's how I imagine it would go if I uh, went to the hotel restaurant on New Year's Eve. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I might—I don't know. I might go to a bar or something with my friends, but uh, that's kind of fucking boring around here, man. Oh, yeah, I hate fucking bars. You know, everyone's just all drunk and shit. You know, I read—I uh, read on the internet today that uh, you know people that go to Times Square, New York, to watch the ball drop, they—they uh, they have to stand there for twelve hours and they can't move. So they—so a lot of them bring diapers and they just shit themselves. <laughs> That's fucking terrible. Okay. Now, now, now I don't understand why. Why would you want to? Why would you want to do that? You know, why would you ever want to? I mean, yeah, you can say, "Oh, I've been in Times Square, watch the ball drop on New Year's Eve. It was magical, you know, and I shit myself." You know, I mean. Uh, is something really that much worth it to where you're, you're going to shit your pants and then you're going to sit in your pants, your shit pants for five hours before the ball drops? You just got diarrhea scratching your balls on top of your balls? You got the diarrhea? You got diarrhea balls? Is that what you're telling me? That's, that's not worth it, man. Okay? You know, maybe, maybe for like a free car. If someone said, hey, Kevin, if you just you just stand in, in New York Times Square and, and stand in your own diarrhea and gets all over your balls for 12 hours and you just stink, then... Uh, then we'll give you a free car. I might think, well, well, what kind of car is it? You know, is it is it a nice car or is it just some fucking Pinto? You know, and people, I mean, people do this voluntarily. That's that's what's weird. You know, uh, yeah. I don't, anyway, I mean, I, I don't understand why people even even if they didn't shit themselves, why would you want to go there? It's so goddamn crowded. You know, you can't even move. You know, everyone's grabbing your ass. You know, some old the old creepy guys are grabbing your ass. They're like, ah, stop touching me, old man. God, what well, is this Japan? You know. I remember one time uh, when I was in Berlin, when I was studying in Berlin, it was kind of like that too. It was so crowded. We went to the uh, Brandenburger Gate, right, where uh, where Reagan gave his, gave his famous tear down, this, tear down this wall speech. That uh, In Berlin, they all have a big celebration there on New Year's, and it was so packed, man. There was there were so many people, and uh, there's like no fireworks laws in, in Germany or whatever. So everyone's like shooting off all these bootleg fireworks, right? I remember that night a firework hit me in the head. It, I, it hit me in the head. I was like, oh, oh, and it landed on the ground, and then it exploded. If it, I mean, if it had hit me like a second later, it would have exploded on my head, you know. But uh, luckily, I, uh, I, uh, it didn't explode on me. And uh, you know, I had German health insurance at that time because I was a student. You know, I guess they have good doctors over there. Of course, uh, I also remember the uh, the doctors were going on strike. They went on strike every year for increased pay because like the government controlled their pay or whatever. I don't, I don't really know what the situation was, you know. But uh, anyway, uh, I hope everyone has a happy, safe. New Year's Eve, don't, uh, don't get too drunk, you know, don't shit your pants, uh, don't shoot fireworks at people's heads, and, uh, I'll see you in 2019, you know, 2019 is gonna be a bigger year for me, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna definitely move out of my mom's house, you know, that's, uh, that's the first, I gotta do that guy, I gotta, I'm already, I've already been here less than a week, I'm just like, oh god, oh god, I gotta get out of here, you know, uh, so that's, uh, when I move down to San Diego, you know, and, uh, I got some goals for 2019. You guys got any goals? You got any, not any New Year's resolutions, just, uh, things I want to accomplish before, before December 31st next year, you know? I want to, I want to definitely get, start doing, you know, get down to San Diego so I can start doing comedy more. And, uh, my ultimate goal for 2019 is to record a, a 15 minute comedy special at the La Jolla Comedy Store and then post that on the YouTubes there. 
so you guys can uh, you can see me do my comedy and then I can retire those jokes, you know, because because you know I've I've been kind of doing a lot of the same jokes for the last couple of years and I, I want to retire them, you know, so I can move on, you know. But anyway, that's my goal for 2019 is by the end of the year to to post a 15 minute comedy special on YouTube's that I film hopefully at uh, the comedy store in La Jolla. It, you know, maybe I'll film it anywhere; it doesn't really matter. But that would be a cool place, you know. That'd be uh that's uh it's a good place for comedy, you know. Anyway, I hope you guys got some goal for 2019, you know. It doesn't have to be a resolution, you know. It doesn't have to be I'm going to I'm going to run 10 miles tomorrow. I'm going to I'm going to lose 15 pounds by January so you know, don't you don't have to do that. You know, no one no one does that, but just maybe uh just maybe think of a long-term goal, you know, for that year. You know, what do you want to do next year? What do you want to be? What do you want to be at this time next year? Think about that. Think about that tonight while you're getting drunk, taking taking ecstasy and cocaine, all right? Have a safe uh have a safe night. See you next year.